Agriculture was once an integrated production system with crops and animals distributed across a mosaic of, in space and in time. But now that we've turned it into an industrial endeavor for, for the economy of scale. Let's see. One aspect, can somebody flip the slide? Mm -hmm. One aspect is, is that corn is in everything. We're even using it to make plastics. However, there's been some unintended consequences, and I'm going to focus on three examples today. Disease epidemics, losing soil and soil fertility, and environmental contamination. Consequence one, disease epidemics. We've gone to uh, large centralized f uh, food processing plants for economy of scale. When something goes awry, we have catastrophic failure as a result. There's been 400 produce-related um, outbreaks in North America within the last 20 years. For example, E. coli and spinach arose in the fall of 2006. There were over 275 uh, consumer illnesses and three deaths associated with that uh, tainted produce. In early 2009, we see salmonella in peanut butter. One thing that uh, makes the peanut butter example uh, particularly bad is because we have a very large or centralized food processing system that's handling many processed foods that contain peanut butter. In addition, it covered the nation. The impact affected every state except for three, and there were over 700 cases reported. Much like centralized processing has affected uh, human health, so have the large-scale, uniform agricultural fields affected and increased the potential of pest epidemics. The advent of biotech and transgenics has focused on insect pests. Okay? They've inserted, it's a family or a range of Bt proteins into a multitude of crops. This has really been a marvelous idea because it's replaced some very toxic insecticides. However, there's a couple unintended consequences associated with the Bt transgenic. First of all, uh, when the transgenic is plant is now more susceptible to other pathogens and pests. And this has been demonstrated in India on the Bt cotton, where cotton is now more susceptible um, to uh, some of the root diseases. Secondly, this particular gene has been distributed very wide, widely over a large scale by distributing these proteins on the field, and we've, this is causing a selection for resistance. Therefore, the protein, uh, the target pests are now really resistant to, these, to the protein. So how did we get into this transgenic technology to begin with? Well, it offered promises of allowing quicker and more advanced breeding. But really, those potentials have, uh, have yet to be realized. And we also deal with a case where it's actually more expensive, which has unintended consequences. The blue line on top represents the cost with the transgenic produced seed in contrast to the, dark, or the black line on the bottom, which references to traditional seed breeding. So the unintended consequences associated uh, with this extra cost are that twofold. One is the con consolidation of seed producers and plant breeders, which has reduced the choice as well as narrowed the genetic base. Secondly, the more expensive seed makes it unavailable to farmers on a small scale and also generates a litigiously charged economy. Given the cost that the industry is bearing, they're willing to defend their rights of the gene, even to the point that a seed accidentally falls off of a truck into and accidentally into an, a, a neighboring farmer's seed supply. Now, the increased risk of epidemics is not new to transgenics. We also saw a case in the mid-1970s when we were producing a hybrid corn. They inserted a uh, mer uh, male sterile gene into the hybrid, and it ended up this was highly susceptible to southern corn leaf blight. And we lost the entire crop one year when the conditions were just right for that epidemic. Unintended consequence two, losing soil and soil fertility. 
Traditionally, crop rotations have been used to manage soil fertility, weeds, and plant pathogens. In the 1930s, commodity programs were implemented to moderate, moderate the market prices as well as mitigate risks for the family farm. Over time, these policies were modified such that we now have corn grown in monoculture and the large corporate farms are the benefactors of the federal policy. Corn's a great crop. It's, you know, you can get high yields, it has high caloric value uh, per acre. However, it's also very thirsty and very hungry. It demands high levels of nitrogen as well as water. The vast majority of corn is grown in the central region of the United States. Um, as you can see highlighted in the, the reds and the yellows. Uh, and they, the corn here receives copious amounts of nutrients as well as pesticides. And uh, if there's not sufficient rainfall, it becomes irrigated. Consequently, uh, we see uh, excess nutrients as well as sediments uh, being washed down through the Mississippi Basin, ending up in the Gulf of Mexico. We see plumes of sediments in the Gulf and that, that contain high nutrients and leading to a dead zone. We're outraged by BP, but look what we've done to ourselves. Third uh, un unintended consequence, environmental contamination. It used to be that the family farm is an integrated system. A typical rotation was one that first started with a forage crop like alfalfa, and that alfalfa takes nitrogen out of the atmosphere and puts it into the soil to add soil fertility. Then you follow that by corn, which laps up the excess nitrogen, followed by soybean, which adds some more nitrogen, followed by wheat. So therefore, the typical farmer needed to have uh, a use for the forage crop as well as the grain. And so they had animals on their farm. And we saw the byproducts from both the plants and the animals being recycled and reused on the same farm. But that's not the case today. We see the, plant, the crop production, the forage production, and the animal production geographically isolated from each other. And what this causes is uh, we start to see um, problems of, the, of a lot of accumulation of animal waste becoming odiferous as well as the potential of breaching of manure pits. And we've seen nitrogen and nutrients flowing into the surface waters and then creating and favoring toxic algae, such as the uh, red tides in the Chesapeake, as well as the toxic uh, blue-greens uh, in the uh, blue-green algae in the, in the uh, Great Lakes. Finally, when I contend that there is a size that we reach that is definitely too big too big such that it causes a catastrophic failure. Nature and traditional farming do offer uh, lessons and models for our current food system. There is a tipping point of scale where risk and vulnerability in our food system increases. Our future policy needs to examine trade-offs of economy, scale, and homogeneity to help avoid catastrophic failure, which may be a result of unintended consequences of our current food system. Thank you.